Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we are excited that you're with us today. As you know, ITAC has, with our new five-year contract, we uh, received some funding from ACL, the Administration for Community Living, your funders as well, OIDD, um, to really embark on a five-year project that is designed to build evaluation capacity. I know you remember that back in the spring, in May, I believe, you were asked to participate in organizational assessments. And then as individual staff, you could participate in an individual assessment. So today, um, we have our contractors, Partnerships for Health, um, is going to, they've, they've looked at all of the information they have synthesized the information and want to share that information with you guys today. Then we're going to break out into three breakout rooms and a Partnership for Health, Health staff will be facilitating a conversation to get your feedback and input on a couple of really important questions that they would like to have your thoughts on as they move forward with designing curriculum and really implementing the overall project with an eye towards what you guys view as success. We will be doing a, uh, I've got two ways to get um, some information out of you. You know that we have to evaluate all of our TA opportunities. So I'm going to put, when we come back from the breakout sessions, I'm going to put a poll up if it, you know, and, and there's also the same questions in an end of the session survey. But if you log off early, you probably won't see the survey. So um, the survey, uh, three really quick questions. Um, as you know, we are measured much like you guys are on all of your projects and activities. So we are looking to measure a few short-term outcomes for you today. Um, I would like to uh, turn it over to Michelle Mitchell. Um, we have Michelle Mitchell, Michelle Muncie, we have Gabby and somebody else. <laughs> but I know it's not Michelle. <laughs> We've started putting a limit on the number of Michelles in our team okay. for our own kind of um, benefit. And I'm going to just say welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here. And Michelle Munzi is going to take us through a brief um, overview of what we're going to be doing. Yes, indeed. All right. So I am going to share my screen and give us a brief overview of where we hope to get to today. All right, so Cheryl did such a great job of introducing PFH that some of what I was planning to say has kind of already been covered. Um, but just to touch a little bit deeper on what Cheryl said, um, we are in the phase of the Buddies Project where you all have completed those assessments that I hope weren't too painful um, and now we want to share the results back with you all um, and facilitate some discussions on kind of the next steps for the Buddy Project and get your input and feedback into how we're going to define success. And so right now we're kind of in this middle ground between the assessments and the curriculum development. So developing that evaluation uh, TA curriculum. And I'm going to pause here for one second, as I mentioned, the evaluation TA curriculum and introduce who I think Cheryl was referring to before, who I think is incorrectly named on here as another Michelle Muncy. <laughs> but joining us today is um, we have a dynamic duo from uh, Massachusetts. They're both amazing educators um, at Massachusetts universities. We have Dave and Beverly Bell, um, and they are going to be working with PFH they have a ton of, between the two of them, evaluation and curriculum development knowledge. And so they're going to be kind of supporting the Buddies Project um, through the curriculum development process, as well as once we get to the evaluation TA. 
Um, so just briefly introducing them, and I'm sure you guys will see them again. So let's get into kind of the nitty gritty of what we plan to do today. So our main goal for this afternoon is to have open discussions with you all and really develop a shared vision of success for the Buddies Project and the Evaluation TA. Um, so we want to be able to kind of walk away today with everyone having a better grasp on how we would define success for the Buddies Project, what that success would look like for you and your councils, um, and also kind of measurable ways that we can make sure we're achieving that goal. And so um, again, Cheryl kind of walked us through the process, but big picture, we're going to go through some high level findings from the two assessments that you all completed a few months ago. Um, and then we'll break up into some breakup rooms, uh, breakout rooms, not breakup rooms, uh, and talk through some of those successes of the project and how we could measure it, um, brainstorm some ideas there. Then we're gonna come back together as a large group and look at some of the barriers that were identified that might influence people's participation in the evaluation TA sessions. Um, and again, hopefully brainstorm some, some ways we can try to overcome these barriers or prevent these barriers. And then finally, we're gonna wrap things up for the day with some next steps and some ways forward for the BUDS project. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Gabby from the PFH team to briefly take us through those high level assessment results. Awesome, thank you, Michelle. So, oh, can you go back one? So before I get into the actual results, we just wanted to say thank you to all that completed the surveys. We had 42 individuals complete it and 37 organizations, which was awesome. And it was a range of different sizes for the DDC councils. So we had some small, some extra large, and we just wanted to put this here just so you could kind of see how that breakdown occurred. Next slide. So there are two main components to our analysis. So we looked at both the organizational evaluation and the individual evaluation assessment. And the two key components that we pulled from those were organizational evaluation capacity. And this was done by just looking at the organizational assessment. And then we also looked at evaluation competencies. And we did this by looking at both the organizational and individual assessments. So we looked at the staff experience and the individual experience. So to start, I'm gonna talk more about the organizational evaluation capacity. So this was made up of three different components and that was organizational culture and practice, commitment and support for evaluation, along with use of data to inform ongoing work. And with all of these together, we saw that um, organizationally, Evaluation is seen as a very important part of your work. And on average, councils have a moderate level of evaluation capacity currently in place, which was great to see. So after looking at organizational evaluation capacity, we moved into evaluation competencies. And like I said, we looked at both the organizational and individual perspectives. And we structured this around our analysis around the different phases of evaluation per the US CDC evaluation framework. Uh, so the first thing we looked at was evaluation design competency. So this was really um, one's ability to create and design an evaluation. So this could be selecting the evaluation methodology, developing evaluation questions, all that good stuff. And we found that both the organizations and individuals rated themselves as having a foundation, a foundational competency with the organization rating themselves a little bit higher than the individuals. The next thing that we looked at was the data collection competency. So this is really looking at uh, one's ability to collect data and collecting data could be through surveys, through interviews, focus groups. And again, um, both the organization and individuals rated themselves in that foundational range for their competency with organizations rating themselves a little bit higher again than the individuals felt they were. The next thing we looked at was um, analysis competency. So this is really your ability to analyze the data that was just collected for your evaluation. And this is where we saw some really interesting things. Organizations rated themselves at a very high 
level of foundational competency. So they were almost up to the moderate competency. However, individuals rated themselves as having only an emerging competency. So there was a mismatch between where organizations felt they were in analyzing evaluations and where individuals felt that they personally were when it came to analyzing evaluation. The last competency we looked at was reporting and disseminating competency. So this is really one's ability to communicate the findings from an evaluation. So sharing the results or being able to demonstrate and share the impact or the outcomes of the work that you're doing. And here we found that organizations rated themselves in the moderate competency group and individuals rated themselves in the foundational level competency group. So again, similar to the analysis competency, but a little bit higher up on the scale. So with all that being said, I know that was kind of a quick run through of a high level of the findings that we had, um, but what are some reflections, surprises, or comments that individuals have? I'll give you guys a few moments to put stuff in the chat. And Gabby, somebody has um, put in the chat the, um, that I think the difference between the individual and the organizational competencies makes me wonder how many councils contract out their evaluation activities versus those who do it in-house and that may make the difference. Good point. I'm gonna stop sharing for now just to, so we can all see each other's faces a little bit more clearly as we talk through anyone's questions or reflections. The other thing we thought about when we were um, putting the findings together, you know, I mean, we don't know why there's a big difference between organizational and individual. We do know that individuals often rate themselves much lower. Um, and so that may also account for the discrepancies. I wonder if there was anything that surprised the people. Sherry, were you? Oh, no. Must be some surprises. No. Ask this. This is Tally Wells from North Carolina. Um, just sort of a foundational question. Um, because I remember filling these surveys out, but it's been a, a while. Um, and measurable outcomes are sort of a big conversation our council's having around initiatives. We've spent so much time just trying to get money out and grants out and focusing on sort of what we have to get out the door next as opposed to how well, I mean, we're certainly focused on how well things are going with our initiatives, but in terms of just being able to juggle time and things, we're really interested in improving sort of measurable outcomes. Is that what we're talking about here? What what exactly are we talking about here in terms of disseminating information and, and sharing information? Yeah. The, so I believe with the surveys, and they were quite a while ago, so I'm <laughs> going to look at Gabby and Michelle to tell me if I'm incorrect. The we were we were looking more about dissemination in terms of info um, evaluation findings, like infographics. I think some people spoke about. So I think it's going a little bit beyond the performance measures when we talk about the the dissemination. So once we actually do a good evaluation. <laughs> then, then you tell everybody about it how, how do we tell people about it okay so I think I'm still in the foundation like I would have answered those questions more about like well I'm having a hard time describing it if I don't feel like I mean I feel like we're doing okay but yeah. we could do a lot better in terms of how we're actually doing the evaluation so how I share how the evaluation went is gonna at least my self-confidence is gonna be a lot better if I felt good about the evaluation Absolutely, Tally. And, you know, that's what we found with a lot of um, evaluation TA is, number one, most people are doing it, they just don't call it evaluation. And the the more confident you you are in, in your results, the louder you want to talk about them. 
Um, so thank you. Any other questions, comments, reflections, surprises? Hi, this is Allison in DC. I, I think I, I, I felt kind of markedly not surprised by it. I, I think based on what Tally just said, like, I think we're doing okay. Like we could do better, but I think we're doing okay. And that's kind of how I read those results. So I think that kind of tracks with what I've seen. Yeah. Which is great, right? Like if we were presenting saying like, well, everyone's doing really bad or like right at the end of the scale, that would be a very awkward conversation. And so I think that's part of why people may be quiet as like, they can relate. Um, and maybe Michelle, if it's okay, can people keep putting comments in that in the chat because they may just be thinking more about about it as we go through. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions, comments, reflections? Please feel free to put them in the chat. And I guess for now, maybe we'll pass it to you, Michelle Mitchell, to introduce us to the factors of success. And I'll start sharing again. So part of our process is looking at how do we evaluate our work? And how do we know that you know, if we get to the end of four years, have we succeeded? And for that, you know, we can define success as like we completed all the trainings, people attended, um, but that that only gets us so far. And so what we really want to know is how how will we all know if this has been successful? And it's going back to uh, Michael Patton has utilization focused evaluation, and he's like, if you're not going to use it, don't waste the resources. And I think, and he probably even says it more bluntly than that. Um, but I think that's really where we're trying to go is this is a resource and it's going to take your time and our time in five years time when we look back or two years time when we look back, how will we know we succeeded? Um, and that's really where we want to get your, your input from. We did ask this question in the survey, in both surveys, and some of the, this, the areas you've identified was um, we'll know we are successful or we know we've been successful, we've used our time usefully is when we're able to know, like think evaluatively. And we use that term because we think it's important and people are welcome to, to disagree with this, that what is increased is the ability to think to think in terms of evaluation, not the ability to become an evaluator. Um, we used to say that just because everyone's got an iPhone now doesn't make you a photographer and you don't need to be a photographer, you are good at other things. And the this is more about knowing what methodologies to use when developing a, a a strategy when starting to engage with with grantees how can we help I mean with your grantees right the sub recipients how can we help them conceptualize how to know if their projects are successful so that's all around like evaluative thinking the other part we heard was this question about an internal versus external evaluator um, what works what should we expect like somebody within our staff who's got the reporting function to be doing? What should, what can we do and what should we be contracting out? Um, there's also a way of just adapting existing structures so that you are collecting the same data, but maybe you collect it in a way that you can use it for evaluation later. Meeting minutes are like one of the best examples. Um, so many, so much interesting information can be 
can be taken just from getting meeting minutes from people and looking at themes and how themes and conversations have changed. Um, there was also um, some another factor was was very technical. How like what's the best way to develop a survey? How do you do a interview so it doesn't feel like an inquisition? Um, Survey Monkey versus Red Caps are like software, data visualization, um, and then targeted competencies, so like cultural competencies. How do we communicate findings in a way that's relevant, that appeals to the target audience? And lastly, use an evaluation for quality improvement. So how do we use data continuously to check in and see how we're doing? Um, I'm pretty sure nobody wants to fill in to semi-short sur surveys, but once you like regularly fill in surveys. So how do how can internally we use evaluation and set up evaluation structures so that we get information that we can do use immediately and for quality improvement. So those were some of the factors of success. What we'd like to do is um, Cheryl's going to use her Zoom magic and we're all going to land in one of three rooms. Um, and and in the group, talk about are there any additional factors that you would think about? And I would think about it in terms of in two years' time, if I've spent my time going to these Project ECHO trainings, what would I need to be able to do or think or say differently to, to justify that? Um, is because really that's what we're looking at. And then once you've fixed on what those factors of success are, as a group, try and see if you can come up with indicators. How would we measure them? So the um, evaluation systems, how would you know, like how would we know that that is, um, how would you measure that for, your, for yourself? Um, so if I stumbled and splattered, Gabby and Michelle will be in each of the breakout rooms and they can give us further instructions and advice as we need it. Um, so I will see a third of you in a breakout room. Yes. Okay, let me see. I will um, go ahead and open all the rooms. And for those of you who have been unassigned, you will be assigned quickly. Welcome back, everybody. Mine was also cut off better. And I just want to summarize the one sentence, which is actually what we were cutting off with is we're not going to just do surveys. We're going to have more tools. So death by suicide will, will no longer be a thing in two years' time. Um, <laughs> Gabby, Michelle, just one or two words about your group, and then we'll go into barriers. Um, and actually, Michelle, do you want to put up the barriers just so people can can start reading them while you're talking? Absolutely. Have a chance to. Common thing, uh, like the common theme of discussion in my group was regarding storytelling and being able to accurately depict um, where you were, what you're doing, who's involved and the impact that you had. And then also being able to accurately analyze data. So those were some common themes. Thanks, Gabby. That's similar to mine. Thank you. And Menzi? My group, we took a bit like of a higher level, more of an organizational or structural. So we had talked about like measuring success in ways of like documenting processes better um, and kind of integrating cultural competencies into evaluation. Um, so we... I think we were focused a little less on some of the more technical nitty gritty and kind of on that big picture of um, incorporating evaluation into the organizations and the systems overall. Um, two things our group spoke about, which I, this is just, I hadn't thought about them before, but looking at, you know, success for like, it's like the staff at the at the councils are the hub or the bridge between their grantees and the board. 
and how competencies and confidence kind of would, would ripple out from them. So I thought that was just a really interesting perspective um, because often boards do not on, don't typically think around evaluation. And so kind of when they develop programs, it's left to the staff to figure out how do we evaluate it? Um, and the more confident the staff are, the more they're able to support their grantees as well. So, um, yeah. Unfortunately, like it's not all unicorns and ice cream. And we, we know that there's just barriers to participate in. And these are some of the barriers that that we that you identified in the surveys. And I think it would be really useful to just one is acknowledge them and know that sometimes there's some things we can't solve and we can't we can't um, we can't overcome all the barriers or all the challenges. But I think there's there's maybe some smart things people do to to help us um, meet these challenges or mitigate them. The, and so I'm going to carry on talking and I'm going to ask you to, in the chat, just put down what are some of the strategies you think people can use to overcome the barriers. Um, one of the first ones is um, varying levels of education experience. And I think that's, that is true. Um, scheduling time zones. Um, what we're going to do is we will have a Pacific time and that I'm, I'm making this up, but it's like every third, every third Tuesday of the month, but we every second month at four o'clock or something. So we'll have a set time and you will know that for a year. And the we will record the the project echo sessions as well um, and, and make them available on the website. So okay. I'm not sure if, if there's anything more we can do to help with scheduling, um, but if you can think of anything, please put it in the chat. Competing priorities is, it's just kind of the way of life, right? We have, we all pulled in like 5,000 different directions um, what we also are going to be doing is when you get the schedule of the dates and times of each project echo session, mm -hmm. there will also be a topic. And I would encourage you to think about the topic. We'll try and give as much description as possible because maybe this is something that's worth all staff attending maybe it's something that's only worth one person attending so it's trying to use the description and we will try and make the description as as simple and descriptive as possible um hesitation to change the sometimes it's hard for people to change if somebody has whatever i was working with a client the other day for the last three years they have implemented a survey that has 143 questions. It's really hard for them to change. They don't want to change. They get the answers to 143 questions. So it's a really hard sell telling, asking them or suggesting that they make it to 30 questions. And so it's just like, it's hard for people to change. And then having dedicated resources for evaluation, it's hot. It's sometimes challenging to make a case to dedicate resources to evaluation because you're taking them away from implementation. I used to work in HIV in South Africa, and it was so hard for me to to say yes. I'm going to take funds so I can go to a conference where that meant that one less person would get antiretrovirals. So I I understand resource allocation. What what I'm hoping is in the long run. If we're able to integrate evaluation within existing systems, it will save time. But it may mean more time upfront. Um, so those are some of my suggestions. Um, I'm going to encourage you to put 
to put everything in um, in the chat because I know we're going to run out of time. I think we're at time, right, Michelle? Yep, we have just a couple minutes left to, to wrap up. Um, so like Michelle said, if you have any additional barriers or thoughts on ways that we can overcome the barriers we see here, please pop them in the chat. We'd love to keep track of those. Uh, I'm going to kind of move us forward and start to wrap things up a little bit um, by looking at some next steps. So thank you all for such a great discussion. Um, we did want to just kind of let you know from PFH's perspective what our next steps are for the Buddies Project. So we had shared these overall results from the assessments that you guys completed, um, but we're actually going to take a deeper dive and do some additional analyses. Um, when Gabby shared the results, she had mentioned that um, you know we had a good breakdown based on the size of the different councils, like how many staff members per council. And we completely recognize that, you know, a council with two staff members, you know, their competencies and capacity is going to be very different um, than a council that, say, has 15 staff members. And so we're going to do an analysis that kind of breaks down the competencies and capacity a little bit more to look at those differences. And then um, when you all completed the assessments, you had the opportunity to request your specific data in comparison to kind of the overall averages across all of the participating councils. So we will also be pulling together those summary reports. Um, and then lastly, as we kind of mentioned earlier, based on the results of the assessments and our discussions today, um, PFH, with the help of the Bells, is going to be working on developing um, the curriculum for the evaluation TA. And as we think about the evaluation TA, uh, we just also wanted to provide like a really brief overview of timeline for those TA sessions. Um, so we'll be using a project echo model. I know we've explained this before. It's really an all teach, all learn model. So we'll all learn from each other. Um, and we'll be holding the project echo orientation later in the fall around November, December of this year. Um, and this will kind of get everyone up to speed on what to expect from these sessions. And then starting in January of 2023, and then onwards for a few years, um, we will be hosting the Project Echo sessions every other month. And as Michelle just mentioned, um, prior to those sessions, long before, you'll have a list of the topics or the focus areas that we'll be going through so you can really decide kind of what makes the most sense for you and your council. And so with that, I think that wraps it up um, for PFH at least. If anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I can see Cheryl just popped up the poll. So I'm gonna hand it back over to her um, to close things out. Thank you guys. You know, we need your feedback. There are two ways. If you don't wanna do this, this poll on your screen, when the meeting ends, you'll have a survey that will be available to you. On the survey, we actually were able to um, have a, a it enables a short answer question. So um, if you wanna provide us some additional feedback, uh, you can do that on the survey. Um, thank you, Partnerships for Health. And um, I think the information was, was really good. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, infusing the opportunity for the DD Council Network to provide additional um, influence and feedback to you about what success looks like and um, to hear about some of the strategies um, that will be used to help reduce some barriers. Um, we are looking forward to FY23 and I know that folks will benefit from this training and technical assistance. This, as you guys know, it's a priority and no surprise of ACLs that we dedicated resources to evaluation capacity building over the next uh, four years now as we move forward. Um, anything else that you guys uh, want to throw out there while we have a minute left? All quiet on the home front. Okay, thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Michelle, Michelle, Gabby, and the bells, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate you guys giving us your time this afternoon.
with that, I will end the poll and end the recording. You guys can sign off at any time.